All right, so on to match five, uh, the first game, again with the replay function. Um, let's see how this goes. So, uh, you know, this uh, this hand was a keep, you know, and with how fast it scrolls, thankfully, um, you know, thankfully I can look at this and explain it. Uh, so this was a keep because, you know, it, it's not necessarily obvious, but I mean, um, this uh, does seem to uh, have a lot of game. You know, it can be a little clunky, but there's a lot of matchups, like particularly attrition matchups, where, where you know, Aether Vial isn't even, like, that necessary. You know, Aether Vial really helps you really pull ahead in terms of tempo. It makes up for the fact that the deck can be kind of clunky without it. Lots of two drops. Two drops that by themselves aren't particularly powerful, but, you know, together they can be very powerful. So when you have Aether Vial, you can really play a lot of them simultaneously. But, um... But, you know, so I decided to keep this hand because you just don't know what you're up against, and uh, it does have game. You know, I've got I've got my Merfolk, I've got my Lords, I've got Brazen Borrower and Dismember to potentially clear the path, and, you know, potential evasion, both in nine terms of Island Walk and in the flying of Brazen Borrower. So this, this felt good, and this does look like it's going to be an attrition matchup. So uh, for a while, I thought, I thought I might, you know, be favored here. I don't know that I am favored, but... Uh, you know, we'll see how the rest of the match goes. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, this does looks like it turns out to be a um, uh, a black green deck, not not a Jun deck. And uh, I'm less familiar with playing this particular matchup, but but I think it's roughly the same as Jun. I could definitely be wrong. Uh, the fact that it's less susceptible to spreading seas, though, is definitely a thing. I guess spreading seas is very um. Is very good. Now here, I choose to play Aether Vial. I just feel like there's a lot of potential uh, removal spells they could play. You know, that might have been that might have been a mistake there, but um, I just really want to get the potential to maybe overwhelm the Liliana at some point in the future. And I'm actually feeling good about the Smuggler's Copter because they have to have basically Abrupt Decay or um, Assassin's Trophy to really punish this, and unfortunately they do have the Abrupt Decay. Otherwise, uh, you know, they'd have to use their mana inefficiently. At this point, um, you know, they seem to be playing a surprisingly high amount of removal spells, given that they uh, they don't have red and lightning bolt, but, you know, they have printed so many good black and green based uh, removal spells lately that I suppose uh, works out for them. You know, and, and this, this is also unfortunate because I do end up losing a card. If I would have drawn, say, a mutable, that would have been more ideal. Uh, I, I just Lord of Atlantis, even though I am a little more susceptible to Maelstrom Pulse, uh, mostly because the opponent didn't actually know about it. They saw the Lord of Atlantis, they didn't see the Master of the Pearl Trident. I wanted to maximize my chances of, you know, maybe them playing in such a way that they could expose their Liliana if I had another Lord. Um, you know, it doesn't look like that really happened. Uh, and uh, here, unfortunately, the Dark Confidant just kind of, um, it's just kind of a big problem. And, uh... You know, it's just it's just very difficult to, to deal with, and you know, drawing these lands where I really need an answer becomes a uh, becomes a big issue. So, yeah, this is kind of how it goes sometimes. Um, I, I think I was looking for a harbinger here. I wasn't exactly 100% sure what exactly I needed. Maybe maybe spreading seas in the harbinger, but um, yeah, I think I'm looking for a harbinger here. And, and two more castle ventresses is just not going to do it. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely needed Harbinger to bounce the scavenging news and keep me in the game. Well, all right, that was uh, that was unfortunate. But uh, over the next game, next, I, I don't think there was really a lot I could have done differently, in, unless I'm missing something. Um, yeah, here it's just their draws line, you know, lined up particularly well. The Aether Valve came kind of late. Um, you know, I, I did discuss, I think, a little bit about how I used to like how Fairy Conclave could uh, could help keep Planeswalkers more under control. But I think I was kind of stuck on two mana for a while there, if I'm not mistaken. Regardless, um, I think I'm going to be making some changes uh, to the deck, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe Fairy Conclave might uh, might get tried again. Um, I do like how it really helps keeping plane, keep Planeswalkers under control. But uh, we'll see. Um, I will go over the next game, and we'll see how that goes. All right, match five, um, game two. 
So, um, you know, there, that last hand was a, a one land hand. Again, it, it, this scrolls pretty quickly, and uh, it just doesn't seem feasible for me to catch that in time. But, um, yeah, there was, there was no Vaether Vial. Uh, there was, you know, nothing to keep. Now, um, the way I sideboarded here is that I uh, sided out three Aether Vials. I kept one in, because if I have exactly one Aether Vial, uh, it's pretty good. But my logic was was that this is an attrition-based game. I'm probably not going to lose because I can't deploy enough creatures quickly. I'm probably going to lose because my opponent ends up having more resources than me. Um, so I did uh, take out the Aether Vials, and I brought in... Uh, I, brought, I took out three Aether Vials, and I brought in three um, Aether Gusts. You know, pretty good in a, blue, in a green-black deck because they... You know, they don't even have the red cards that Junt has. Um, so, you know, since half their deck is pretty susceptible to Aether Gust, uh, I figure that's pretty good. It, you know, it can... I mean, it's mostly going to be pseudo-removing creatures, you know, putting them on top of their library or putting them uh, on the bottom. Uh, but I, I, I do think just having that little extra pseudo-removal is pretty good, um, you know, in this matchup because Tarmogoyf definitely can be a problem. I also took out the Chalice of the Voids for Relics. I think that's pretty... It's pretty obvious um, that Relic is good at dealing with their graveyard base threats. Uh, so in that regard, here I have this hand, and I think this is a perfectly reasonable hand. Um, so I do, I do keep it. Um, Relic is the obvious play here. Uh, they do keep an Inquisition. I think that's a mistake because. You know, the reality is, uh, they want, this is a resource battle, and I think they generally want to have more resources at the end if they can, um, you know, when, when we get into top deck mode. But, no, here I make a big mistake. I, I, I don't play the Harbinger of the Tides. You know, I am not exactly sure, you know, why that is the case, but most likely I just, um, you know, this is, you know, most likely I just was uh, too focused on, I guess, you know, me commenting, um, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't do it. I, I, I do remember a thought passing my mind about it likely going to eat a removal spell anyway, but um, clearly I didn't think about that too long, if that's the case, because, because you know, this this exact situation of uh, getting into problems with Liliana, where I did get into this issue last game, so this is, uh, this is pretty heartbreaking, but now I'm in a pretty bad spot. The good news is, is I'm not likely to lose a Dark Confident again with these two dismembers. But the bad news is, is that I've got to get this Liliana off the table. So I do thankfully draw a Master, but, you know, they have uh, they have the Fatal Push for that. Um, they've also got a Scavenging Ooze. And unfortunately, it's just looking very unlikely I'm going to be able to deal with this anytime soon. And there's two creatures that are, that are uniquely threatening. So, you know, with so many uh, bad upticks on me, um, it, 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 you know, it's just a very not good situation, unfortunately. And I also sort of, uh, sort of removed that Lord of Atlantis before the Scavenging Ooze came down, either the first time or second. But realistically, that, that, that's not making a difference here. That doesn't make it, that doesn't end up making a difference. Um, yeah, I mean, at least I've got the Bowman, the um, Brazen Borrow. I've got to keep these treetop villages under control. They represent a lot of pressure. Um, I think I think my hope is is that maybe I can I can uh, deal with the scavenging news. Maybe they uptick Liliana, and I can uh, bounce in response. But they draw the Inquisition, you know, because if they didn't draw the Inquisition, say they drew a land or anything else, and they played it. Um, you know, they might uptick Liliana, and then I can at least get the Scavenging Ooze off the table, give myself a little breathing room, you know, maybe have a 3-1 to get one solid attack with Liliana, but that Inquisition, uh, just, you know, just made too many problems. Uh, at, th at this point, I'm, I'm pretty much expecting that this game is over. Um, yeah, and they have an ultimate, too. Unfortunately, I have to keep, I, you know, I just lose instantly to the Treetop Villages if I don't do this, but... But this makes it so that I'm guaranteed to lose the following turn. So, you know, um, yeah, heartbreaking, and this does happen sometimes. You know, interestingly enough, other than the other than the Rakdos Prowess matchup, the chalices, the chalices wouldn't have been particularly good in most of the matches. But I don't think I, 
I really drew them anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's how this match goes. Now, I'm actually going to also record the first game. Uh, it, it's pretty quick. I mean, the first match, you know, that, um, uh, that I skipped because it didn't record the first time. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go over that. I'm going to go over that next.